180. That's not good enough. Meh. Now you're talking. Three. Your big cast iron casserole dish down. You haven't got one of them. Go buy one. Brilliant. Um, seriously, uh, if you haven't got one, a uh, big saucepan will be fine. Big, nice, heavy thing. Um, wrap it on a low heat to start preheating. Um, gonna make jambalaya. Uh, don't know if I mentioned it in any of but I've got a massive affinity. I think it's probably the wrong word. I massive love for Cajun cooking, Cajun food, Cajun cuisine. Um, and jambalaya is one of those sort of ones. It's not a cornerstone of it. It's not quite like a, a gumbo is, or a cuvillon, uh, or dirty rice. But it's one of the big um, Cajun foods. But it's probably the one that it gets, not necessarily messed up, because Cajun cooking is it's home cooking and it's, do it the way you do it but there's a lot of recipes out there for jambalaya that are essentially just essentially a paella but without the saffron and it, or it's just chuck a lot of stuff in a pot with some rice and that's the jambalaya it kind of is because jambalaya means i'm fairly certain it translates as just jumble it's just a mix of loads of stuff together but proper louisiana cajun new orleans jambalaya um starts with the trinity which is two stalks of celery, a green pepper or a red pepper, a large one, I've got two medium ones, and an onion. Uh, so that's the holy trinity. Uh, chilies, because they like it spicy, and can't forget the pope, which is garlic. Don't skimp with the garlic, but it's garlic. Um, so chop all this up, but you've seen me chop stuff up a million and one times, so I ain't gonna bother boring with ya, boring ya. So turn this into this. Right, um, I kept the garlic separate. That will become apparent later why i've done that um i've also got a few other bits and pieces this to one side um high smoke point oil i've got granite oil you can use grapeseed oil uh canola oil peanut oil uh, sunflower oil will probably be all right as well um 400 grams of rice a liter and a half of chicken stock and i have also got a cup of flour half a cup of flour and we're gonna have half a cup of oil to make our roux um pretty much the only thing i ever Measure volumetrically, um, not volumetrically. Uh, yeah, volumetrically. It's volumetrically, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway. Um, this is kielbasa, smoked Polish sausage. Um, proper jambalaya would have andouille sausage in it, which is a lovely smoked sausage. Um, can't get that in the UK. There's like one or two places you can get it from, none of which I can get to at the moment with lockdown and all that sort of stuff. Um, and got some chicken fire. These are fillets. You want to use bone in, go for it. Um, I'm going to whack this onto a higher heat. Take the lid off. Uh, first of all, we're going to sear off our chicken thighs and preheat the oven to 180. Right, so I'm going to splash a little bit of oil in there just to sear the uh, chicken off with in. So, get the plate out. Get the chicken on. Right, so we're not looking to cook the chicken through, we just want to get a bit of sear, brown it off a bit, get a bit of colour, build up a bit of flavour in there. Why do people do that? Right, it's like. Yep, those are working. Got a test. Another one as well. That's not good enough. Meh. Yeah. Now you're talking. I'm making chicken and sausage um, jambalaya, uh, which is one of the more classic ones, but you can use pretty much anything. Pork, sausage, well, I'm using pork, beef, ground beef, um, 
they make it more of a dirty rice, but still, dirty rice and jambalaya are cousins, not quite brother and sister. Um, rabbit would be quite traditional. Um, you'd use a hearty fish, prawns, lobster, crab, if you have a thing you're feeling really fancy. Put them right, nice bit of colour, brown it off a bit, build a bit of flavour, not letting it cook it through. Once you've got a nice bit of colour on your chicken, pull it out of the pan. Now, we can start making our roux. So, half a cup of oil in the pan, let that heat up. Um, now, you may know a roux as being butter and flour. It's a French thing, it's a paste, you use it as the basis of quite a lot of sauces. Uh, use it as the basis of quite a lot of sauces, French roux. Um, but that's, you essentially are, you're essentially poaching flour in butter, like a light roux basis for sauce to thicken it up. Cajun roux, use oil, because it gets hot and you fry the flour essentially. It makes, the smell is amazing. Um, not particularly healthy, but this is the basis, the main building block flavour for all Cajun cuisine. So let your oil get hot, really bloody screaming hot, and go in with flour. Now, once you've started this, you do not walk away, because this can go from dark brown to burnt in a flash of a bloody eye. Literally, really, watch it, stay here, and keep an eye on it. And keep it moving and keep it stirring. After you've had a bit of practice, you might be able to get this done in um, 15, 20 minutes. Um, I do it go a bit slow still because I'm scared. Um, but by all means, if it's your first time, go low, go slow, and take your time. You burn it, start again, because you'll the taste will be bad. Right, so now this, I don't know if the colour's going to come out all that well. Uh, I've also changed to a whisk. Um, it's essentially a blonde roux. This is the point you could go to with butter, but past this, the butter would burn. Um, and it just wouldn't taste great. This is where you need all of this done, ready to go, uh, before you start this. Because this will not wait. Right, this will keep getting darker and darker and darker, and eventually it will burn. So you need to get this stuff in here, ricky tick soon as this is now this is a dark room this isn't you need to get that in there as soon as this is at the point you want it in which we're getting relatively close to the smell is amazing the only thing i can clean it to is kind of like popcorn it's got this wonderful nutty buttery oily ow right so that's another thing be careful with splashes and stuff because this stuff is napalm it will stick to you and it will burn. So be careful. Right, that there is almost burnt. I've just caught that in time. But that's the colour you want. Dark chocolate sort of colour. Don't be afraid to turn the heat down a little bit if it's starting to go. See that colour there? That's that there is what you want. Right, go in with our veg. This is gonna cook quick, so keep it moving, keep it stirring. This is why we haven't put the garlic in. Because the garlic would burn. Nothing worse than burnt garlic. The onion, celery, and pepper can hold up to a bit of a hotter temperature. Keep that stirring. Get temperature back up. God, seriously, the smell of this is just something else. It smells amazing. So now that's all calmed down a bit. Go in with the garlic. Keep it moving though, because it is still hot enough to burn that garlic in there. So keep her moving. Right. 
you could smell my kitchen right now. It's amazing. That smell of sweated garlic. Right, so now go in with our chicken stock, a litre and a half of it, keep it stir, add it, S steady steam but keep stirring because that flour, that roux, is going to make a sauce, make a gravy. In with the other jug of, you see it's starting to thicken up already, that's the flour in the roux. So essentially what we've got here right now is a very basic gumbo. All right? You can just leave that to cook out for a half hour to an hour, even longer than that, just leave it rolling. Sausage, chicken in there, that's essentially a gumbo. But to make it a jambalaya, it requires the addition of rice. The, uh, I can't remember how much rice, 400 grams of rice. So that's going to soak up a load of that uh, gravy, that roux, that sauce, can cook and plump up. Only things that need to go in there is salt, salt, pepper, a decent heavy Pinch of salt, lots of black pepper, dry until your arm aches. Oop, just fill that up. Right, so, grind until your arm aches. Keep going, keep going. There. That's about enough black pepper. Set <laughs> that in. And I also add, this is maybe not particularly traditional, I don't know, about a tablespoon of thyme. Because I like it. Right. That stirring. So now go back in with your chicken and all those juices and sausage. Uh, any smoked sausage will do. Uh, like I said, that's kielbasa, Polish smoked sausage. Um, if you can get on, Dewey, good luck to you. But uh, you know, as Matheson smoked sausages, sausage rings, they're f perfect. I've used them before. Um, right. Now, lid that up, let it come up to the boil, and whack her in the oven for half hour at least, let that juice, uh, the rice suck up all the juice and cook through. Um, but it's one of those sort of things that you can just leave rolling, just leave it going for hours. As long as it doesn't completely dry out, um, it's just gonna get better and better flavor wise. Right, that away she goes. And I'll see you in 30 to 40 minutes. Right. Right. 40 minutes later and half hour, 40 minutes later, we have jambalaya. Right. And that, that's perfect as it is, but I'm gonna amp it up a bit. We have got four diced sliced spring onions and half a block of uh, unsalted butter. Proper butter, not, not that fake rubbish. Cut it into cubes um, so it distributes a bit easier. Uh, you can leave this out, um, it just makes it so much more rich and I don't want to say creamy, but velvety. Um, don't forget this is screaming hot. Uh, get a bowl. 
What's there? A little bit of butter through and the onions. And serving spoon. Dig in. There you go, nice. One pot, easy to make, feeds the whole family, absolutely beautiful. Nice winter warmer, great hangover cure, and um, fridge it up, lasts for days. Lunch, breakfast, dinner, maybe not breakfast, but lunch, dinner. Um, huh. Bosh. Um, subscribe, like, like this, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. Hit me up on Instagram, follow me on Instagram, and uh, comment if you uh, want to see something specific. Really.